James Simpson, with his use of chloroform as an anaesthetic, had overcome one of the major problems of surgery in the 19th century, and that was pain. But patients were still becoming infected. Their wounds were going gangrenous, or they were getting blood poisoning, septicemia, which was leading to their deaths. There had been some doctors, like Ignaz Semmelweis, who had realised that if you actually wash your hands uh, before you go and help, a, a woman give birth, actually the, the woman and the baby have a much greater chance of surviving. But uh, Ignaz was dismissed as a lunatic. And it wasn't until Pasteur published his germ theory in 1861 that any real progress was made in this area. Joseph Lister, um, whose father had been, uh, had been a doctor and had done a lot of work um, developing microscopes, he was uh, greatly inspired by Pasteur's germ theory, and he thought that if there were all, if all of these um, invisible bacteria in the air were, were, were causing disease, then they could be dealt with. He uh, looked at how sewage was being treated and how they were reducing the smell in sewage with uh, something called carbolic spray, and he thought that maybe this carbolic spray could be used to uh, kill these invisible germs. And so he introduced this into the operating theatre with amazing results. Uh, practically all of his patients stopped dying of infection. But his ideas uh, met with opposition. Uh, what a surprise. Uh, first of all, there was the smell of the carbolic spray, which lots of surgeons objected to, and it would dry their hands out and crack their skin, which they didn't like. Either. It also was uh, increased expense of, of an operation because these uh, surgeons were quite often operating privately, weren't they? But uh, that was a key factor. Um, there was also another tradition of a, a skillful surgeon would be quick and surgery was speedy, and clearly, with introducing the carbolic spray, it greatly slowed down um, procedures. And also surgeons had come to, you know, it's accepted that many of their patients would die. And when Lister's patients weren't dying, they just didn't believe his results. So uh, again, Joseph Lister's ideas were slow to catch on. But in 1878, um, a, a German doctor called Koch, uh, he actually proved that it was bacteria that was causing septicemia, that was causing the, the, the blood poisoning. And so this research greatly uh, helped Joseph Lister's cause, as were as uh, were some incredibly successful surgery was happening using um, antiseptic surgery, such as the first appendix being removed, um, and uh, and also able to operate on the heart. Now, so, uh, one chap was stabbed in the heart and able to operate and save his life. By the 1890s, this antiseptic surgery, so spraying this spray in the operating theatre to kill the germs, was turned into aseptic surgery, creating an environment where germs didn't exist, so making sure that all, um, all tools that were used, all workbenches were sprayed with carbolic spray to kill germs in the first place, everything was washed thoroughly, and that doctors began to wear gloves, uh, because even though they washed their hands, they couldn't get the dirt under their nails. Um, so creating a completely germ-free environment.